on the one hand, Putin this year changed the constitution in the middle of the COVID pandemic to increase his power, to um, increase his term limit. But on the other hand, perceived negative events happened, like the failed COVID response, uh, the oil crisis, which he inst instigated, and the poisoning of Navalny. Which, um, so what kind of effect, if you sum everything up and get to, an, uh, in the end, to, an, uh, to a conclusion, what kind of effect will 2020 have on Putin's grip on power? So I think so far, he, is, he lost all these battles, as you mentioned. And I think in the longer run, uh, they will play out a major role. They will play a major role in uh, uh, distrust to Putin. Because right now we have second wave. And in the first wave, they tried to hide um, uh, COVID death because they needed to run this military parade and this constitutional vote. Now they cannot hide it anymore because the second wave is really catastrophic, especially outside of Moscow. And uh, the very fact that Putin is not helping the families and the fact that the healthcare system is not doing well and it's been underfunded and the fact that the new budget actually, uh, uh, the new budget is, is exactly what you expect. They invest in state media, but they cut spending on healthcare. So that's an informational autocracy at its best. People die, but what's most important is that people don't know. And I think uh, it's uh, 2020 in longer term has been a disastrous year for Putin in terms of his popularity and support. But in the short run, I should say that because of the pandemic, there are no protest rallies. Protest rallies are completely uh, forbidden. And also poisoning of Navalny was a big blow for the opposition. Navalny is extremely effective. And he's recovering now. He will come back probably uh, soon. And uh, maybe when pandemic is off and protest rallies hopefully will come back, situation may change. But uh, currently, you don't see any imminent threat for Putin, except for two other things, Belarus and Khabarovsk. So Khabarovsk protests keep going on since summer. Belarus protests keep going on since summer. And we don't see what Putin can do about this. And... Uh, uh, that may that may eventually bring his support down. But by now, his support is lower than uh, two years ago, but still high. But, of course, uh, in the future, in uh, 2021, uh, you have the Russian parliament, the Duma uh, elections. Um, could this election uh, potentially lost by the current government? I think the uh, Russian government is very worried about this and what they are going to do. They will not register any opposition candidate and they will steal the election as well. So what they're going to do, they will allow for this uh, multi-day vote, which makes it easier to steal the election and uh, uh, make it difficult for observers to see what's going on. They will also introduce online vote, which uh, unlike in the US or in Estonia will be a major tool for stealing the votes. Mm -hmm. And so the vote count will be uh, unprecedentedly fraudulent. But on top of that, they will not allow any opposition candidate to run. And so we shouldn't, we shouldn't, be, um, we shouldn't think that this will be a, 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 change of, a game changer. No, I think I the think, uh, Russian government knows that, and then they will do a lot not to, not to lose and this election. We, we, but overall, I think, I think, I think the, the situation is changing exactly because of the factors we mentioned income stagnation, and actually today's Russians' incomes are uh, more than 10% lower than uh, in 2013. And of course, pandemic. And pandemic is not finished yet. And uh, mm -hmm. by the end of the year, we'll probably have 300,000 of Russians uh, dying, dying because of COVID. And uh, when you think about this, this is a huge, huge number, actually much higher than in the US in terms of per capita in most European countries. Do you think maybe we've we've talked uh, a lot, of course, about the rural areas of Russia? Do you think the Duma will be more diverse um, after the elections of twenty twenty one? Well, it's uh, it's a great question. I think uh, uh, the current plan announced. Well, it's not announced; it's leaked uh, last week that um, Putin uh, wants United Russia, the ruling party, to get constitutional majority. Uh, which means two thirds. The current um, the current uh, approval rating of United Russia is thirty percent. So there'll be a lot of uh, fraud, 
but maybe there'll be some diversity because they will need new popular faces. They will need faces which rep uh, represent uh, people who are connected to people. And maybe there'll be new uh, faces that represent rural areas in particular. Now, I should say when we say rural areas, um, in Russia, 75% live in cities, okay? Mm -hmm. Russia is an extremely educated country. If you, uh, Russia has more people per capita with tertiary education than any European country. It, it's only competing with uh, Canada and Korea. So we shouldn't say that rural areas are the core Russia. Russia is not Moscow, but Russia is urban and educated. And so it's not, it's not, uh, it's not a country where a rural vote is the majority. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, to come back to what you uh, said just before about uh, the Belarus riots regarding the election, you said that the Russian government is most likely going to steal the election or at least mix results. Would you expect a the same public outcry or is it going to be immediately squashed? So it's a great question. In 2019, the Russian government did not register opposition candidates in Moscow city election, Moscow city parliament election, and there was a major outcry and big protest, which was very costly for Russian government. Uh, this time, the Russian government will try to play it smarter. What that means, I don't know. Uh, they will probably just not allow for protest rallies, but we'll see, we'll see. There is also this intelligent vote or vote smart strategy by Navalny, which helps to uh, hurt United Russia even when uh, real opposition candidates are not registered. So we'll see how it works out. I was already but in Belarus, in Belarus, yeah, I'll explain what it is. But in Belarus, I would just say an important thing. Lukashenko made a huge mistake registering one opposition candidate, Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. And this is a typical mistake for a 20th century dictator. A male chauvinist dictator thought women, women have no chance. But the opposition united around this candidate and she won. In Russia, Mr. Putin may be a 20th century person, but around him he has a sophisticated group of advisors who know what to do and what not to do. And they will not do a make a mistake like this.